want to start this series of videos on the most simple of searching functions, the linear or sequential search. It's pretty simple how it works. It goes through each item in the list and checks it against the item we're looking for. As it's doing its comparison, it can do one of two things when it comes across the number we're looking for. The simple thing it could do is just return a boolean out, true when we find the number or false when we reach the end of the list without finding the number. We could also return the index of the first instance of this number found. And the second option is that we can continue through the list and record all the indexes of the number we're looking for. In that case, when we find the number we're looking for, we'll add that indice to the list of um, indices that we've found and we'll continue through the list until the end adding all those indices that we found. So let's code this up now. So here is the starter problem that is in the GitHub repository down in the uh, comments. And we're going to start with the simple linear search. The first thing we're going to do is start a for loop for number in numbers, which is of course our numbers array down up here. We're going to put an if statement in here. Now if number, the number we're currently at, is equal to our goal number, we're going to return true. If we pass all the way through these numbers without hitting that goal number or finding that goal number, we'll exit that list and we just want to return false. So let's test out this line of code. Okay, as we can see, we're looking for seven and we go through this list, we can see we have, I'm sure we probably have a seven in there and it's returned true. If we get a smaller number of numbers, hopefully we won't have seven in there. And there is seven. Let's try it again, see if we can get it. Okay, as we can see, we don't have seven in this list, so it returns false. In our second function, we're going to look for all the indices and we're going to add that to a list. So the first thing we want is a list in which we can store our indices. So let's call this list found and an empty list. And we're going to just copy and paste the rest of this code. And we just want to change this in here so that we enumerate through our list. So enumerate through uh, number. Then when we come across the goal number we're looking for, we want to add that index to found. So found dot end index. And instead of returning false, we want to return our found list. So let's run that and see how that goes. Okay, as we can see, it's in index one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. If we put some more numbers in there, we should see a couple of indexes. So it's in index 1 and it's in index 12. So those are the two simplest searches you can perform on a list, but they're pretty inefficient. Our first function has a best case big O number of 1, which sounds pretty good, but that's only if the number we're looking for is the first one. The real average case is half of n. That's assuming the number exists at all. If it doesn't, the worst case is n. We're looking at every number in the array, which isn't great. The second function is even worse. No matter what, its big O number is n. It's looking at every number in the array. So obviously this isn't great. How do we improve it? Well, the biggest thing we can do is put the numbers in order. And that's what I'm going to cover in the next couple of videos. The different algorithms you can use to order your list. And after that, how you can use the knowledge of the list being in order to make a more efficient searching algorithm.